So when you do the one-way ANOVA for this um, Chapter 8 SPSS Between Subjects Lab, it's going to spit out output that looks something like this. So the first table that you should see is a descriptive. And even though I discussed this um, up front on the, the lab page, I'm going to come back to this when we're ready to put this information in the write-up. But you can see here it's basically giving us the mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error. That's what we're interested in on this table really for, um, for our write-up. We're going to come down here to this ANOVA table. So again, um, it says ANOVA at the top. And you can see it has one, two, three rows. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns. And this first row that says between groups, this is giving us numbers for our between groups variance. And if you remember back to statistics, you had to calculate this all up, out by hand. You got your sum of squared, you got your degrees of freedom, and then your mean squared. Um, to you know, you use the sum of squares and your degrees of freedom to get your mean squared. Um, trust me, if you calculate out. If you divide 14.131 by 3, you're going to get this 4.710. What's nice it, with SPSS is you don't have to do that anymore, but it's still important to kind of understand what we're talking about. So this between groups variance is telling us how much variance we have between the conditions. Now remember, in this study, we have four conditions. Let's go back up here to our means. We have our self-immersed condition, our self-distance condition, our other immersed condition, and our other distance condition. So that's four groups or four conditions. And so this between groups variance is telling us that variance. So um, we've you've calculated sum of squares, which we don't have to do anymore because we're using SPSS, but it's important to understand where this degrees of freedom comes. So if you look back to the lab, you can see that I have it written out as as k minus 1, where k is the number of groups you have. We had four groups. Minus 1 gives us 3. And remember, this df is at degrees of freedom. Now, this next row here is our within groups variance. And so this is how much variance we have within a group. So within that self-immersed condition, how much variance do we have? And that all gets added up. And so we to calculate this, we take, um, we've calculated the sum of squares, we're not going to go through those calculations, but we also need those degrees of freedom. So important, again, understand where those degrees of freedom come. So it's important to understand where those degrees of freedom come. So if we go up here again and we add up all of these, these numbers, we get a total n of 115. So our degrees of freedom for our within groups variance is going to be that total n, 115, minus k. We have k was four groups. Again, look back at the page of me talking about these numbers is confusing you. Um, and that gives us 115 minus 4, so our total number of participants minus the number of conditions we have gives us 111. And then this total degrees of freedom is the total number of participants 115 minus 1, so n minus 1. And again, the sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom gives us our mean squared. Sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom gives us our mean squared. And then the ratio of this mean squared between over the mean squared within gives us our f value. So this f value is our statistic that we use for the ANOVA, just like the t-statistic is our statistic we use for the t-test. So if you think back, you may or may not have gotten to ANOVA in your statistics class, but if you think back, you know, with a t-value, you had your calculated t, and then you compared it to what that critical t was for whatever um, p-value you set. Same thing here. This f-value is our calculated f. We've used all of these different numbers to calculate the f-value for the data in this experiment. If we were doing it out by hand, we could then go to a, um, a table and we could look up at P.05 for our different degrees of freedom. Is this significant or not? 
We don't have to do that with SPSS. It gives us the significance level. And so this, that's what this means. This, this SIG is significance. And so this is your P value. So this is the F value you're gonna report. This is the P value you're gonna report. And it's 0.002. Now remember what's important is that you want a P of less than 0.05. So less than 0.05. This is definitely less than 0.05, right? It's 0.002. So that's, it's important to be able to understand in terms of decimals, what's smaller and larger than 0.05. So the other critical information are those degrees of freedoms we just talked about. The between groups degrees of freedom and the within subjects, that's what you're gonna report. So if you go back to the lab page You can see here I've pointed that all out for you, showing you that when you're reporting it in your write-up, you're going to report it as F, and the F should be in italics, and then you're going to put this 3 here, this 111 here, so that's degrees of freedom for between, degrees of freedom for within. This is our F value, and that goes here, so F degrees of freedom equals our, the actual value from the table, and then P, the P is also in italics, and then that's the value you put in there. With SPSS, you actually put the actual value that's reported in the table unless it's 0 .000. So if you have a value that's 0 .000, you're gonna put P is less than 0 .001. What does this P less than 0.05 here gives us 0 0.002. What does that mean? That means that those means for our different conditions are unequal. So think back to statistics where you had your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, the null being that the means of the, the different groups or conditions would be equal, and the alternative that they weren't equal. And if you had a p-value of less than 0 0.05, you would reject that null hypothesis that your condition means were equal. So we are rejecting that null. Now, when we do our write-ups for APA style papers, we don't normally talk about null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. You might see it occasionally in a peer reviewed paper, but not very often. So really what we wanna talk about is we wanna present that using a one-way ANOVA, we, you know, or a one-way ANOVA indicated that there was a significant difference between the means of our conditions, or um, a one-way ANOVA indicated that the means of our different conditions were unequal. And then that's where you would put this P, P value, or report your F value, basically. And if you look in the lab, um, after I start explaining like the different, the what's in the table, I give you some different verbiage that you could use. So let's go ahead and just, just start off and, and try writing something up. We're going here to our document. And maybe I wanna put in, uh, well, first I, would, first I would have my results section, right? So I'm gonna type that, I'm gonna put it in bold, and I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to go back to left align and I'm going to indent. So I'm going to say, um, I could say the results indicated a significant difference. Um, results from one-way NOVA indicated that the four means of the conditions were unequal. There's all sorts of different ways. So you could say something like the results. Oh, I don't want this to be bold anymore. The means of the four conditions were unequal. And then you type in your F, and you'd add in those values. What do we say, Th three? We go back here, we look. Three and 111. 
equals, oops, equals, we go to our table and we look and we see it says 5.343. And then our P is equal to, from the table again, 0 0.0022. So this is the, the, the proper way to present that F value. Um, sometimes I see square brackets and all sorts of different things. This is the proper way. One thing we need to do is make sure that our F and our P are in italics. Now we could we could write this a couple of other ways too. We might say um, the results indicated a significant difference in Y's reasoning scores. Remember, Y's reasoning was our dependent variable reasoning scores among the four. I'm going to say four, whoops, different perspectives. Now this is where you kind of, you need to go back and you need to read through that description that was at the very top of the lab to make sure you, you understand what these variables mean. And here again, we would put our F. And you really need, don't just copy this. You need to understand where to find these values and how to present them properly, because this is important for your final project, um, because you'll have to be doing this with your own data. I don't know why I put a parentheses there. And again, all letters that are representing statistical notation need to be in italics. So this is just, and I have a couple of other suggestions. So I don't want you to just copy exactly what I put. Now this is probably the, the way that I would do it because that's the way I um, was taught. However, I know that they're getting away from saying significant difference and sometimes just saying that the results indicated a difference or um, that the results, that they were unequal. Um, I kind of like, you know, putting in here the, the dependent variable so that your subject or sorry, your readers know what you're talking about and it reemphasizes what you're talking about, as well as kind of mentioning that um, independent variable. So I think that's a good habit to get into. So I'm going to delete this one. And again, if you look at the, the lab page, um, you can see that there's a variety of different ways I suggested writing it up. So I'm going to go with this one. Now, all this tells us is that there's a, a difference between those four conditions. 